Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip, and today we're going to talk about autumn. Autumn is amazing, it's a time of great colors, you go into any kind of park and you can spend hours there trying to find that perfect picture with the leaves on the ground, the leaves on the trees, people in the leaves, kids in the leaves, dogs in the leaves, anything in the leaves, leaves everywhere and it is amazing. However, unfortunately, autumn is also the time of bad weather. For instance, it happens to me regularly when I try to take some nice autumn pictures, what I'm ending up with is this kind of weather where everything is just dull, grey, there is this heavy mist in the air and it's just uh, super annoying because you have these drops on your lens all the time. It's just not very pleasant and you end up with images which are rather dull, even though when you were there you saw the amazing colours. So what do you do? Do you just try to go back on a better day? Well, you could. It is also very easy to bring out the detail of these images when you get home and you see the image is completely dull. And today I'm going to show you a couple of cool techniques that you can use in first Photoshop and then a software which is called Aurora HDR 2018. And I'm going to show you how you can convert, transform tra words, how you can transform images such as that one, which I took in an area called Glendalough in Ireland, how you can make those colors pop again, how to bring this autumn scene to life and make it look really, really stunning in actually no time at all. So I'm going to show you first Photoshop and then Aurora HDR. Just skip to the point, whatever you're interested in, and let's just jump right in. All right, guys, let's jump right into Photoshop. Now, I'm not going to explain every single technique I'm using to its basic elements, like not, I'm not going to talk about layers and layer masks and stuff like that, because I've done it in the past and it just gets lengthy if I do it every time. So, today we're going to concentrate on the actual effects that we're going to create. Now, have a look at this particular image here. Is it not super sad? Is it not dull? Does it not make you feel like... Ugh? So, we're going to change that. Now, the first thing I want to do right away is I want to duplicate my background layer. So, I'm going to hit Command or Control J on my keyboard, and now I have a copy of my background layer. I'm going to create first what is called a soft Orton effect, but just halfway through. In essence, I'm going to change the blend mode of that new layer from normal down to soft light. Okay, and it's gonna give the whole thing already a little bit more contrast right away. So if I switch it off and on again, you can see now we can have at least a little bit of the dullness reduced from our image right here. Now next thing, of course, we need more color. And there's just basically, I mean, you can see they are there, but they're just not super visible. And I need, I, I like colors to pop in my images. You know, if you know my work, I'm really a big fan of popping and really bright and shining colors. So I'm gonna grab a hue saturation layer and I'm just gonna increase that saturation like an ass. Let's go maybe to something like this is not too bad. Cool. I'm gonna make that small and even this little tiny change already gives the image so much more feel to it, which is exactly what we needed to achieve. Now, the next thing is that on the top right here, we have the problem that we have a lot of light, right? Because it was overcast and the light was obviously coming from the top. So now I have all this light and I need to reduce it. So I'm just gonna grab a quick curve adjustment layer right here and I'm gonna bring that curve down to something like this. And I'm only looking at the top part of my image right here just to make sure I'm actually only affecting that, right? So I'm gonna bring down these darks a little bit and make the dark areas darker a little bit more. Maybe something like this is not bad. We could even go a bit more, maybe something like that. Now I'm gonna invert that particular layer mask by hitting Command or Control I on my keyboard and now I just use a nice and wide brush to paint in the, the, well, the darkness, I guess. So I'm gonna go with a nice 20% opacity and I'll just brush that in ever so slightly. Now normally you wanna take your time with these kind of things. I'm just gonna rush through uh, because I don't wanna you know, bore you to death with watching me painting a layer mask, uh, painting brightness in. Cool. So let's reduce that properly, maybe here. We can always add another little bit of a vignette later if we feel like. Okay, awesome. So the next thing I wanna do is I need the image to be a bit more crisp. So I'm not gonna do that by hand. I'm just gonna use the camera raw filter. So first we need a layer that has all the information on it. So I'm gonna create a, what is called stamp visible that copies every adjustment that we have just done onto a new layer. So I'm gonna hit command or control, alt, shift and E on my keyboard. And now I have this new layer that has all the information. Now with that, I can go to filter and then down to camera raw filter. And here there's, there are a couple of buttons I'm interested in doing the process, but mainly I want to increase the clarity and just look at the little preview. It's just going to make it so much, so much nicer. It's just going to make these colors really, really pop out. So I'm going to go with maybe something like, maybe something like this is not too bad. Yeah, I think I can actually live with that. Let's hit the OK button right there. And in theory, I could use the exact same layer just to go back to the camera raw filter 
and uh, should have done it in one go, but why not? I'm going to apply a little bit of a vignette that is pre-prepared and waiting for us right here. So let's just pop a little bit of a vignette on maybe something like this. I'm going to increase the feathering to maybe something like that. And I'm going to hit the OK button because I kind of like it. Now, we're going to have to decide if we want to have this effect everywhere and just as strong. I'm just going to reduce the opacity uh, because I did it together. Maybe something like... Maybe something like this is not too bad. We could always darken the edges more if we felt like, but I think I think it's actually not too bad. Now, one of the last steps that I would like to do in this particular well, image, I guess, is I want to increase the reds a little bit. So they, they have to pop just a tiny bit more. And I don't know if you can see that on the video, but there is this blue haze, which comes from this, well, the, the, well, the, the crappy light, I guess, from the top. And I need to definitely reduce this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna generate another, what do we do, curve adjustment? or hue saturation. Let's go with the hue saturation layer and I'm going to change over to the blues. Now in my image there is not much blue so in theory I could just go ahead and reduce the saturation for the blues and I mean if I were to increase it you see it's mainly blue in the dark areas of my image right so you can see all the dark areas and the shadows they become blue and that's exactly where I want to re remove the blue from so I'm just going to go and do exactly that to maybe something like this. Cool. Digging it, liking it. And the next thing that we can do is just to increase the contrast a bit and maybe a little bit more darkness. And I think we're actually going to go the easy way and just going to use the camera raw filter again because it's there and why not. So I'm going to create another star visible. So just copy everything that I've done on a different layer. And with that, go to filter, camera raw filter. And here I'm going to go to the dehaze button. Okay. So this button, if I turn it to the right, is going to take a little bit out of this of this haze out of my image. All right. So if I were to turn it to the left, holy hmm, whatever, but no, we're going to turn it towards the right. Too, not too crazy, but maybe something like this. I dig that. Let's hit OK right here. That looks good. And lastly, I'm going to take another hue saturation layer and I'm going to go to, let's go to the yellows first. And let's see if we increase the saturation of the of the yellows. Do we like it? I think we like it. Let's play with the hue a little bit. We could make it a bit more red. Why not? Something like that. That looks good. And with the reds themselves, if I select those, let's just increase the saturation of those a little bit. And also while we are at it, let's go to have a look at the greens. I just want to see what happens if I change the hue of my greens a little bit. Nah, I think I actually like it the way they are. Let's just leave it like that. That looks kind of nice. And within a couple of moments, we have gone, nope, that's the wrong one. We have gone from an image that looked like this initially to something really, really cool, where, where I would say like, this is a really nice autumn image. Of course, you want to take your time when you do these kind of things. I really rushed through and I haven't uh, properly taken a breath in a while, but you get the idea. And we're already done. Just a very quick edit in Photoshop. And that's the point. Keep in mind, it's a very quick edit. So of course, when you do these kind of things, do take your time and decide exactly what you want to do. Change the brightness more, change the colors more, whatever you feel like, it's your playground to play with. Now, this is Photoshop and Photoshop, of course, is used by most people, but I'm also a big fan of a different editing software that's called Aurora HDR. And uh, I'm going to just pop in into this video how I would use this software to create exactly the same, that I take this really dull image and just pop it up like crazy. So if you're a fan of Aurora HDR and you're wondering how to use it and you're just getting into it, feel free to stick around and uh, let's just jump right into Aurora HDR 2018. So the only thing that I have done so far is to take my single raw file and drag and drop it into Aurora HDR and that's the screen that'll pop up. Now here I've been asked if I want a tone map, yep, and I want to create the HDR. Once you click that button it's going to take a second for the software to figure out what looks best and then it's going to come back to you hopefully with some sort of result. Let's give it a second and then come back to it. And here we are 30 seconds later and Aurora HDR is done. Now, of course, the image that comes by default is kind of odd. And we, well, what I normally like to do is to choose a preset that gets me a certain percentage there to the way, like, you know, on the way. And then I'll take it from there and make the adjustments that I need. So let's click on the preset section and pick a preset that would work for our purposes. Now, I know already that the landscape realistic is exactly what I would like to use in my particular case, even though it looks horrific at the moment. So let's close that preset section down. And don't forget, if you have your images and you drop them into, you know, into Aurora and you look at the different presets, click through them and just have a look what sections or what settings are going to change on the right hand side. It's a really cool way to learn what the, each uh, preset does and what each function does. 
So now that we have that, I'm going to have to obviously work on this a little bit. Now with that, I'm going to reduce, first of all, the exposure just a little bit, maybe to something like, let's go with something like this. I think that would be not too bad right now. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to increase the image radiance. I'm just going to do that to maybe something like this. And these two things alone, they take the image, which was not as as nice just a moment ago, and transform it into something which I would consider already really, really cool. So if we look at the before and the after, I found it incredible what kind of detail this software can get out of an image and what it does with colors. Really cool. Okay, so let's create a new layer on top of that. So I'm gonna click on the new layer symbol and add a new layer. Now here, I'm gonna reduce the exposure even further. And right now, I'm only looking at the very top part of my image right here, only that one, because it has a little bit of you know too much light coming from the top there. Once I have that, I'm gonna click on the little brush symbol because now it's time to brush that change into our image. So I'm gonna increase my brush size to maybe something like that. And well, it's actually very large. Let's maybe reduce it a little bit to something like that. And now I'm just gonna brush that into the top part of my image right here. I'm also gonna add a little bit of a vignette, so I'm not too worried yet about any kind of weird discrepancies there, but it looks kind of cool. Awesome, next let's create a new layer. I like to have things very separate, so I'm a guy of many layers. Be free to do it in, in just a few if you like. But I'm gonna go down now to the part where I have control about the top and the bottom, right? So first of all, let's check the orientation that Aurora has figured. So I'm gonna go with something like this rather. That's done. And what I want to do is, especially at the bottom, I want to reduce the exposure a little bit. Uh, wait, I am at the top. No, nope. we want to go to the bottom, right? So let's reduce the exposure a little bit because it is water and water normally can't just be as bright as anything else. So let's go down to maybe something like this. I kind of like that, that's not too bad. Now for the top part, what we can do, we can increase the contrast a little bit, right? And maybe even increase no, maybe not the vibrance, probably not. No, it's gonna look a little bit odd with the blues on the top. So we're just gonna not do that right now, right here. Cool, but now that we have a little bit of a darker area down here, that's already not bad at all. Now, what I can do, however, now that I have adjusted that, I'm gonna create another layer. Layers upon layers, that's the way it goes. And here now I can go to the section where I have control over the different colors. So for instance, we have the same problem as in Photoshop that there is a bit of blue in the image. So I could theoretically now go ahead and just reduce the saturation of the blues in my image, right? And I mean, if I increase it like mad, you can see again, they're only in the dark areas of the image. So I'm gonna go and just reduce them a little bit to maybe something like this. We could theoretically, if we wanted to, also change the hue of the blues to something else. But I think this would be rather weird in the image. I think I'm just gonna take them the way you are, the way they are. I'm gonna decrease the saturation and I'm also gonna decrease the luminance just to give it a bit more pop in terms of dark areas. That's kind of cool. Maybe not that much, but something like that. Cool, now the image is not as blue anymore, which is exactly what we needed. Now we could create another layer and I'll just actually do that and now give it a nice vignette just to close the whole thing. So let's go to the vignette section. I'm gonna increase the increase. Well, actually I'm pulling it to the left so that would rather be a decrease. Hmm. Anyway, I'm gonna add this vignette and I'm gonna add it to a strength of maybe something like this is not too bad. I like that. Let's give it a bit of feathering to something like this. Hit the done button finally to be done with the brushing. And I think that looks good. So of course, this is just a very quick editing and you can take your time, go into the sections that you would like to edit, maybe give the, the like here a little bit more of a, of a pop by increasing the highlights or whatever you wanna do. But for a five minutes edit, I think going from here, where you can't see anything, it looks dull, sad, and you wanna quit photography forever, to this, which is really cool, popping image that just shows how beautiful the colors of autumn can be. And again, increase the colors, you know, work with more light, whatever you feel like. But yeah, that's in general how I would create an image in Aurora HDR such as that. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did like the video. If you did, do not forget to give it a thumbs up button and also to give it a thumbs up button. Rather give it a thumbs up, but also if you haven't already and you're new, don't forget to subscribe. And I shall see you in the next video, which comes out every single week. So stay tuned and until next time. Bye.